Hello everybody, this is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo and today I'm going to talk a little bit about crimp beads. So over the years, um, beading techniques, the way you make jewelry has changed quite a bit. I've been making jewelry for, goodness, well over 40 years. And back in the day when I was making jewelry, back way back then, we had these things, which now they call them crimp bead covers, but they were actually, um, they were called clam shell bead caps. Let me show you what they look like. They look like a little clam. See how they have an opening here at the bottom? And then they have this little hook. It's just a little hook here. Um, and what you would do was you would feed your beading wire into this hole. And I'm going to show you this in a little bit. And you tie a couple of knots and make sure they're inside that opening. And once they were inside that opening, you would close the opening up. Well, today they're using these as crimp covers. So basically you have something like this that's called a crimp bead. It looks like a really tiny seed bead, but it's not as um, thick as a seed bead. And you use a special tool to smash it down. You put your um, beading wire in there. And um, anyway, there's a technique where you make the loop and then you um, smash it down. And it, it kind of... Um, the special tool will not only smash it, but it'll kind of round it out a little bit. But then what they have you do a lot of times, because they don't really look very pretty, they have you use this thing to cover that up. So we're talking an extra step using this teeny weeny thing that is not that easy to use <laughs> and covering it up, make, spending more money and more time to use this to cover that up. I totally disagree with that. And I'm going to tell you how we did it. I'm going to show you how we did it way back when. Now let me just show you this finished necklace that I made. Oh my, it's been over 30 years ago. And I wear this necklace quite a bit. I love this necklace. Isn't it pretty? But see, we have a clamshell bead cap there or what they call, what I say, crimp bead cover. And all I did was tie two knots in there and closed it up. And it is very sturdy. And I think it looks very nice and finished. So we're going to make something that's very, very simple. I'm not going to put any um, elaborate things in it. It's just going to be a straight, simple bracelet. And I'm going to use these Picasso beads. Okay, let me just set this over here. I'm probably going to need more beads than that. I'm going to need two of these bead clamshell bead caps. I'm going to call them that. And you need to have um, wire cutters, flat nose pliers, and I always keep my round nose pliers. You'll also need um, a jump ring and a lobster claw clasp or some type of a clasp. I'm just going to set these aside for now. And basically what we're going to do is I just want to string these up real quick. All right, I have these all strung on there. And so what I'm going to do is get all my findings here. You feed in one side onto your clamshell bead cap and you tie two knots on top of each other. One, two. And I'm going to take my pliers and just kind of tighten those knots up. Okay. Next, no, by the way, I am using 20 pound fishing line. Back in the day, we also used 20 pound fishing line. Now I know I've had a couple of people mention, how can you tie knots 
on a fishing line like this and make sure it stays. Believe me, that's going to stay. That's tight. Okay. So, and you can do this with just regular beading wire too. I have done that. But I usually use fishing line because this stuff, if you go to the beading department, you can find this exact same stuff. They just call it beading wire and they charge you more for it. It's the same thing. Anyway, so I feed my clam shell up there. Make sure it's in there. Now, I do have a friend of mine. She likes to put glue in there. But she also only uses 8-pound fishing line. So that's why I say 20-pound fishing line. You do not need any glue. I've never glued any of my stuff. And I've had stuff that's 30, 40 years old. All right, so gently you're going to close this up, okay? And I, I, when I say gently, I mean, you know, don't, don't smash it because you could break it. So then you got this thing hanging out, and this is where you need your wire cutters. And you just get down as close as you can. And I usually like to take this and pull, clip it off. And then I go back, and I feel to see if there's anything sticking out. Um... And if there is, there's nothing sticking out in this. But if there is, I kind of take my nail and kind of push it back in there. And uh, smooth. So the other side, you do pretty much the same, but it is a little different. You're going to cut off enough where you can tie your two knots, okay? So you put that down there like this. And, oh, I do have to get a special tool. Hang on a second. And here it is. It's a pen. <laughs> I think we all have pens. If not, they don't cost that much. So you're going to tie a knot, like so. And then you're going to take your special tool here, your pen, and you're going to feed that knot into that opening. Now you have to be very careful because sometimes it may want to wrap around the the neck or the underneath and all. You need to make sure it actually goes inside that opening. And pull it tight but not too tight. You don't want it to get so stiff. You can, you can pull these so tight that this will be stiff. But you kind of still want that fluidity. And this is going to be good. You don't want it too loose where you pick it up and you can see part of the wire. Okay. Now we're going to tie another knot the exact same way. Just a knot, and then again, you feed it down into the center there, and again, this one you can tie a little bit tighter, okay? And they're both in that little section. You need to make sure, sometimes they may come out a little bit, just, just pop it back in there, and then you take your pliers and you just carefully squeeze that and clip the end off like so and again I see do I feel anything oh, there may be a little something there Okay, so it's nice and smooth. It's not going to scratch my arm or anything. So then all you have to do is put on your findings. Um, let's see, one side. I want to make sure these are closed. And you're just going to loop that in like this. And make sure those are closed. like that okay and then on the other side I'm going to use a jump ring and a lobster close that up make sure it's closed tightly there put it in the little hook close it up 
Make sure you don't have any gap there. And you've got a finished bracelet or necklace or whatever it is you're doing. See how easy that is? That is so much easier than making a mess out of a crimp bead. I do not like the way they look. I think they look very cheap. This looks very finished. It almost looks like a bead on the top. Let me know if you've ever used these crimp beads this way. And I hope you try it. Try this technique if you haven't and let me know how you liked it. Thanks for joining me. Y'all have a great day. This is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. Bye-bye.